Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kim McMullen. I'm from, I work in the Department of Statistics at UC Davis. I'm the undergrad staff advisor. We have people joining, and so I'll probably have my other panelists wait like a minute before introducing themselves as we get, as the attendees start joining. So um, do you all want to just hold off for about like a minute while yeah. we um, yeah, no join? Actually, I think um, you all can get started. Um, um, so again, my name is Kim McMullen. I'm the um, undergrad staff advisor in the Department of Statistics. And then we have two of our current students here that can introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about you. Patrick, do you want to start? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, my name is Patrick. Uh, I'm a fourth year statistics major uh, on the data science track. I will be staying a fifth year. I am minoring in computer science as well, and I transferred from De Anza College in uh, the Cupertino area. Um, I am part of the data science club on campus, as well as some other clubs like the computer science club. Um, and I think there's one more, I can't remember right now. But uh, and I'm, I also work in the uh, Veterans Center in the Memorial Union as a peer advisor. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. And I'm Joe. Um, um, I'm also fourth year, uh, transferred. I, um, I transferred from Berkeley State College, and I majored in I majored in statistics uh, in the machine learning track. Uh, I'm also an officer along with Patrick in the Davis Data Science Club, and I'm also staying fifth year. Thank you. And so, for those um, in attendance, you are welcome to ask us any questions you want using the Q and A feature, and. Um, if you also have a similar question as someone, you can upvote the question just to make sure we cover it. Um, and of course, you all can always email me if you have questions after this, um, but I think we'll get started with some of the questions that we're getting. Um, so the first question is, I am interested in data science, but what level of programming skills is required? So um, I can talk to you a little bit about our requirements. Um, um, specifically the preparatory requirements, and then I think our student panelists can talk a little bit about their um, experiences in our classes. So um, one of our preparatory requirements for our data science track is that you have to take at least one intro programming course. Um, we recommend at least two just so you're given a stronger foundation. Um, and then you have to, for our data science, um, track, you have to take several um, programming intensive, more specialized data science classes as part of the track, in addition to some of the core statistics classes you would take no matter which major option you do. So do you want to speak a little bit about how programming is involved in the classes you've taken so far? Yeah, I can. Um, I'll go ahead and start with that one. So um, I think first off, uh, Davis, the stats department does a very good job of making the sort of inclusive. So for example, um, in the stats department, we use R a lot. Uh, I think it's pr the primary language we use. And when I came in, I had no idea what R was. But um, every class I've taken has done a pretty decent job of like getting you to the point where you're comfortable in the class with it, or at least that you're able to use it in the sense of that class. For example, um, regression analysis, which is typically one of the first upper division stat classes you'll take here. Um, every time there's a discussion, it's typically the TA going over um, code in class, so you have an idea of how to use it for the homework and stuff like that. But um, once you get into the more like the more data science specific classes, I think it's the 141 series. Um, you'll learn a lot more about like the intricacies of R and like being able to use it more in a general sense. And there's also uh, some Python depending on which class you take. Uh, for example, the statistical learning courses, which is 142 series, um, those are in Python. Also, one thing to note is that um, the type of program we do in these classes, um, Python and R will be very similar in that sense. So it's not too demanding to kind of learn two languages because they're pro uh, pretty similar for what we're doing in the classes. Also, uh, just building on that, it's not like, um, what you kind of expect in normal computer science class where you're kind of doing like large software engineering style projects with like hundreds or thousands of lines of code. 
um, a lot of like the, at least the assignments, uh, homework assignments we get is more like using the, using programming to solve specific problems. So whether it be writing functions or like querying data and stuff like that. It's not like you're like, um, there are projects where like larger, like you have to design um, like an R package or you have to design like a shiny dashboard, which is a R thing. It's, it's kind of like um, a web app for R, um, but those are typically like end of class projects kind of thing. So it's not like something you're, you're expected to know how to do as you go into the class. Okay, great. Thank you all for, um, for that. Um, so our next question is about our different major concentrations and how do you um, get a concentration and what determines what you get, um, what determines your concentration more specifically. So um, in our major program, our Bachelor of Science has five different tracks. We have an apply track, a, um, uh, oh my gosh, my, I'm blanking, an apply track, a general track, a machine learning track, a computational track, and a data science track. So a lot of these classes, the, these tracks have similar preparatory requirements and a lot of core classes that overlap between the majors and then they do have you take more specialized electives and things like that. Typically in your first quarter we can make an academic plan for you where you um, where it allows you, you to complete classes that work towards any track because like I said there's a lot of core classes that overlap that are kind of the foundational classes before you get into the more specialized classes. So it's not something you need to decide right away. Um, but um, it is something to uh, think about um, and before you come here you'll do orientation and we'll explain a lot about our different tracks more in depth so um, you can get a better idea of what they are. So there's no need to make a decision right now but there is a lot of good information on our website right now. And also um, the tracks the way they're set up it makes it, it's extremely easy to switch between tracks if you change your mind like half like after your first year um i think most tracks is only like a difference of maybe five to six classes and those are typically more like the elective classes but all like the stat classes follow the same general like probability theory mathematical statistics regression anova etc cetera, etc cetera. so um like you can sort you can switch if you want like um i was data science track then i switched to applied then i was thinking about machine learning and then i switched back to data science and like i didn't have to change my schedule much to do that so it's pretty, yeah. it's not, it's not bad. Yeah, building on that, I'm still like now 100% sure with what track I'm going to do, but as long as you keep track of what classes you'll need uh, for the specific, uh, I guess, tracks, you'll be fine. Also, a lot of them are very similar, like Patrick said, except for the applied one, I think, from, my, um, from like um, what I've seen. The applied track is the one that's the most different and in, in kind of computational track, but also the other ones are usually not too different from each other, especially the science track and the machine learning track. So it's pretty possible and don't feel that you'll, you know, you'll be tied down to it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we have a question about how to prepare um, during the summer and I actually have a great answer for that. Um, so in addition to orientation, this summer, our department is going to hold a statistics transfer student boot camp. So um, it'll be in um, the middle of September. We'll invite you all to a virtual boot camp where we will teach you basic concepts that's really that are really important to review for the upper division classes you'll be taking in the fall. So um, we definitely will help you out with that because it is a big jump from your intro stats class that you might have taken a few years ago to the upper division stats classes that you'll be taking. Um, and so we'll help you prepare for that through our boot camp. And I don't know if um, you all um, have any other suggestions um, from your personal experience about what that transition was like. Um, um, I mean, I didn't do any prep over the summer and I took like a stats class like two years before I transferred. Um, and I think I did all right my first quarter. So it can be intimidating, especially because it's on the quarter system and like you're going to get thrown into the uh, like, you know, what seems like a really fast paced environment and all this mat new material. But I don't think it's that like the first quarter is going to seem hectic and it's going to seem terrible while you're going through it probably. But um, 
at the end of it, it's not going to seem that bad. And I'm confident everyone in this chat um, will be able to succeed. Yeah. Um, so one but, warning, though. Um, oh, sorry. You got to your I'll say if, if you did do, want to prepare in some way, I would definitely brush up on um, algebra, like basic algebra stuff. Um, it might seem kind of silly, but even in like my upper division, like stat classes, like probability theory, mathematical statistics, a lot of people do um, forget some of the fundamental concepts. So brush up on your algebra um, and maybe learn R like, or like kind of get an idea of how it works, but you don't need to do that over the summer if you like don't really want to, or if you have other things going on. Yeah, also building off of that, um, I was kind of surprised at how much calculus was kind of seen as like a normal thing in these classes. So to kind of just like know that um, calculus is just kind of expected to know, like professors will kind of assume that you guys know calculus. And um, I think the calculus I've done so far, it's not like too complex. Uh, it's mostly stuff you see in Calc 1 and Calc 2. So a lot of girls, especially series, is a very, very uh, common topic. Also derivative stuff like that, it's very, very common and yeah. Yeah, um, you'll probably, at least in my experience, the most math intensive classes were the probability theory and the mathematical statistics classes. Um, yeah. Those definitely have a lot of calculus. So yeah, I would also review, uh, you know, Calc 1, Calc 2 stuff. Yeah, I think that's all very good advice. Um, and we'll help kind of direct what you should be preparing for with our boot camp, and we'll provide you with more information about that before fall quarter begins. Um, we have a question that's, are computer science classes hard to get into if you're doing a minor? I think the short answer is yes-ish. Um, so, um, classes in computer science at UC Davis are restricted to computer science majors during the first round of registration. We do that with our statistics courses as well, so you all really benefit from that for your statistics courses, but then that means that you do have to wait until past two in order to register for computer science classes. Um, it's not impossible. The computer science minor is very flexible. There's a lot of classes you can take for it. Um, so we have students minor in computer science all the time. Um, our most popular minors for our majors are economics and computer science. Um, Patrick, though, do you want to talk about your experience? Yeah, um, so my experience, I'm just going to throw a little disclaimer. I do have priority registration, which is very nice, and it helps me like avoid a lot of these issues with um, getting into some of the more difficult classes. But I will say I have met other statistics classmates in um, my computer science classes that don't have priority registration. Um, most of them are seniors though, just because the, as you accumulate units, you'll get an earlier pass time. So during pass two, when you can wait list, it's easier to get a higher position. But also some uh, computer science classes are very flexible and they let in like 50 people. Um, and I don't know how fall is gonna work, but at least this quarter, because everything was online, one of my professors was extremely flexible and let everyone on the wait list in. Um, so I don't know if that, if that will be the same for fall, but I imagine there may be some more flexibility because of the online system. But again, it's kind of limited based on um, the professor and the TAs available. But yeah, as Kim said, the computer science minor is extremely flexible. You can pretty much take any upper division computer science class. And I think upper division math and some stat classes can also overlap. So um, yeah, don't, it's not impossible. It's, it's definitely doable. And here's a related question is about whether doing a minor or double major hard if you're doing the data science track. Do you want to speak to that? Um, I don't think a minor is too difficult. Um, like, so the part of the reason I'm staying at fifth year is I didn't come in with all my prereqs completed. Like I was missing linear algebra, uh, which prevented me from taking probability theory right off the bat. Um, so that's sort of, part of most of the reason why I'm staying a fifth year. Uh, had I come in with all the prereqs, I'm confident I probably could have minored and graduated. Also, I decided on a minor really late. But uh, if I'd come in earlier, like with a set plan, I, I'm confident I could have done it in two years. However, for double majoring, um, I would say it's difficult just because um, a lot of the, like, especially later on your senior year, you're probably going to have to take at least two and possibly three st upper division stat classes at a time just to graduate, if you're aiming to graduate within those two years. 
So you're probably gonna have to load your schedule with like 16 units all two years if you wanted to do a double major. Cause I, I have looked at the CS major cause I at one point also did consider changing majors or double majoring. Um, and like, I would have to take like 16 units or like one quarter of 20 units. And I'll just like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really feel like doing that right now. But I think if you plan it out very well, it's possible. And, but, um, and you have to be like, you have to stick with it and like make sure you're on top of all your work. And to add to that, the statistics major, if you come in with all of your preparatory classes, for most of our tracks, you'll be taking an average um, of two major classes per quarter. So a minor at UC Davis is usually only five classes, but if you don't have the prerequisites for those classes, you would have to take more. But usually if you have all the preparatory classes, you have all the prerequisites, you would probably be taking most quarters two major classes and one minor class to do a major and a minor. To do a double major, it is a lot more classes. So you would have to have heavier schedules. It's common for our students that want to do double majors to take additional classes in summer to give them more flexibility during the year or um, stay an additional quarter or two. Um, it also depends on the major. Our majors at UC Davis vary pretty significantly in the number of units that are required. Um, so if you're doing a lower unit double major, it's obviously easier. Um, but I think that covers that question. And again, if we didn't quite um, uh, answer the question thoroughly, you can always like follow ask a follow up question as well. And so we have a question about um, what um, should you study to prepare for upper division? I think we covered that. Um, as far as if specific programming languages, um, in our department, like Patrick said, we mostly use R and Python. So if you did want to do some preparation, you could review those languages in addition to what Patrick already mentioned. And also, like I said, you could also attend our boot camp where you will get more specialized help for your review. Um, I just want to say, I would definitely, if you can, attend that boot camp. Um, had it been offered when you know, my summer I was transferring, I, I most likely would have taken it just because always having that extra bit of preparation is nice. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> so um, this is a more specific question about um, biostatistics graduate programs um, and which track would be best for biostatistics graduate programs like the machine learning track versus the general statistics track. And either of those tracks would prepare you for either a biostatistics or statistics graduate program. It would also depend on the biostatistics program you're interested in and what the preparatory requirements were for that program. Some biostatistics programs like the biostatistics graduate program on our campus is a lot more stats and math heavy compared to some other biostatistics programs that are a little bit more bio focused. So maybe you would also have to take some additional um, courses in the biological sciences. But I think either of those tracks like mathematically prepare you for um, graduate programs in statistics or biostatistics, but you might um, want to look into the specific programs you're interested in and make sure you're meeting all of their admissions requirements. Um, Patrick, you already addressed this a little bit, but um, a student asked more specifically about how um, are you handling doing the major and the minor um, and whether you think your job prospects are much better. Um, so I think my workload is pretty doable. Um, I'm, I do a lot of research into the classes I'm, t I'm signing up for and kind of like what to expect from them before the quarter starts. And I'd kind of use that to plan around what I want to take. So for example, um, if I'm taking three heavy programming classes or I'm taking like one or like there's a computer science class that's more theory based and not programming at all, what I might pair it with. Um, but I, it's, I think it's doable. I haven't had, I don't think I've had any moments where I've like kind of just broken down and started crying. Like, I can't do this. What am I doing? Um, it's definitely manageable. Okay to have those moments. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but in terms of job prospects, um, at least for me personally, uh, I 
I definitely like the computer science and engineering side a bit more than the pure statistical theory side. That may have also been because before being a stats major, I was a computer science major. Um, and so that stuff has always been more uh, interesting to me. Um, so part of the reason I did a CS minor is because not only am I applying to data science jobs, I'm also applying towards software engineering jobs as well. Um, so in that sense, I would say the job prospects are better where I maybe like on my resume, if I say, you know, I have a computer science minor, it's a little bit more attractive for people that are like recruiting or hiring for software engineering positions. Um, but other than that, I don't think like not having a minor would hold you back from a software engineering position either. Um, it's just like what skills you develop and like how you showcase those skills is what's important. Um, do you guys have time for extracurricular activities? Uh, Kido, you want to go? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, in the first quarter, it was definitely hard because the, uh, the pace was really fast. Um, and I wasn't really used to that, but definitely once you get uh, more used to it, it's, I think, it's, I think, I think I have plenty of time. I think a lot of the time um, is kind of wasted due to my fault, but <laughs> <laughs> like there's definitely tons of time left for extracurriculars. Um, Cause usually you'll take around, around three or four courses and I think it's definitely um, doable. And as for the other sub question, um, I used to minor in econ, um, but then I sort of wanted to be more mathy. So I, I, I already took a bunch of econ courses and then kind of stopped doing that. And now I'm trying to take more math courses. So, and even if you make those decisions, um, like you, you still have plenty of time. So it's, uh, I, don't, I don't think you'll be too bad if you want to, enjoy your life and stuff yeah although actually um during the fall and winter uh, a lot of your uh, free time will probably be dedicated to you know applying for jobs interviewing for internships stuff like that so and that does take a lot of time and patrick and i have done that together a lot so yeah it's yeah. it's a big commitment so definitely um yeah that the recruiting part is it's a big uh time sink so just keep that in mind yeah, like what Kidok said, um, there's definitely times where it feels busy, but I almost always have time for some form of extracurriculars. Um, like, even when I was taking four classes, I still had time to go to the ARC or the gym um, whenever I wanted to. Uh, I still had time, like, you know, go downtown and hang out with friends and eat um, and just, you know, hang around campus and enjoy life. Uh, it was never like I was always constantly hitting the books. Like, like it was always locked in my room or the library kind of thing. Um, so like, it's possible to definitely have extracurriculars and enjoy your time at Davis. And I think, um, our student panelists have always planned really well. And I would want to highlight that that's really important. Um, they said that they, um, are careful about what classes they schedule together. And that's something that is also really important is you just have to plan well and have a balanced schedule. And, so I think that's something that's also really important to making sure you have time to do everything that you want here. Mm -hmm. right. And I just want to take this opportunity to give Kim a shout out. She's been like super helpful. Every time I have questions, I go ask her. I, I think I visit her at least once or twice a quarter. Um, and so like, if you have any questions about your classes, always like feel free to send her an email or drop into the stats department, whether it be to see her or one of the peer advisors. Um, it's always a good idea just to bounce ideas off of you know, the, um, Kim and the other advisors, just because they probably have a better idea than um, most people on campus, especially because they work in the department and they've dealt with this like for a very long time. Um, so yeah, it's like if you have any questions about classes or like worried about your schedule, um, Kim should be your first resource. She's been great. She's been super helpful for me. And yeah, also, yeah. yeah, to add on to that, uh, if you think you're in this really unique situation that no one's ever been and you think that she can't, she can't help you, that's probably not true because she's probably kind of dealt with pretty much every possible scenario out there. Um, so just, just go and ask. Yes, I definitely think it's really important to always ask if you have a question. And I do want to also add that um, for those of you that are coming to UC Davis in fall, you will be doing orientation this summer. So I'll be helping you uh, figuring out your fall schedule and we'll discuss what your academic plan will look like for the rest of your time here. Um, when we meet for orientation in fall. So you will definitely be getting a lot of additional information about what to register for, and you'll be able to meet with me one-on-one -on -one to talk about your academic plans. So I don't want you all to be worried that you have to figure it out right now. Um, we'll be 
providing with you a lot of information. So um, the next question is, what is the standard class size for statistics, major specific classes, and then what is the usual class environment for them? So um, statistics classes, upper division statistics classes have lectures typically three times a week and the lectures are usually capped at 100. Um, and then tw once a week, you'll have a discussion section where it's a breakout section of only around 50 people. And the discussion section is usually led by a graduate TA and then the lectures are led by a faculty member. Um, but in terms of class environment, do you all want to talk about what that environment is like? Oh, and yeah, sure. More specifically, like, how is it different from what you experienced in community college, too? Uh, um, I think there's probably a lot less interaction than community college. Uh, also, um, I think in community college, you usually don't have discussion. And discussion is really what you think it is, at least not in this department. It's, um, it's usually kind of like a a time where the uh, teaching assistant or the graduate student to kind of review what's been, you know, gone over in the lecture and also help you with homework and stuff like that. So uh, most discussions I've been, they usually give a lot of hints and how to do uh, for homework stuff. So it's uh, usually a very good idea to attend those. Um, and yeah, and maybe Patrick can add on to that. Yeah. Um, also, sometimes this, what Kiddo said, uh, quizzes are like, oh, not quizzes, sorry discussions are really helpful for homework and sometimes they'll have like midterm or quiz reviews in them. Um, also sometimes uh, TAs will hold like quizzes during discussion so it's very important you go or else you know you're gonna miss a quiz. Um, but I'm, they'll most likely tell you at the start of the course if, it, if it's like one of those classes like I know um, I think it was our probability theory class our TA had a quiz the second half of every discussion and the first half was kind of like reviewing the material and kind of going over some example problems. Um, and it, but in terms of like class settings, it's it just kind of seems like a I don't want to say like a straight lecture, but it's like it, kind of a lot of the material to absorb at once. And then like, the discussions really help to reinforce that material. Um, and yeah, I would agree. There's a bit less interaction with the professor, but that doesn't mean you can't build a relationship with professors. Um, like I have some professors I'm like I would consider almost friends. Um, because I go see them in their office hours a lot when I was in their classes and then like we wouldn't necessarily even talk about like the class material I'd talk about them with, uh, talk about their research and stuff with them and you know that can lead to a lot of opportunities like whether it be um, letter of recommendations or even a research position uh, personally I haven't pursued a research position but I'm sure like I know a lot of our professors do work in various labs and departments around campus so um, if you're interested in one of them it might it might be a good idea to reach out do you want to explain what office hours are for those that don't know? All right, so office hours are um, every professor will have a certain time slot during their uh, during the week where you can drop into their office and ask them questions about homework or you just anything about the class or like as I said like their research or anything specific, like you're curious about maybe if you have career questions um, and some of them have like worked in uh, like you know national laboratories and stuff and like say you want to pursue the same route or how they sort of ended up where they are and you say you want to become a college professor like a lot of them do have really helpful advice and um a lot of them like, is really insightful uh right now actually in one of my classes um it's the capstone data science course our professor always opens the zoom call a little early and uh like as people join in he'll sort of like get to know you one-on-one -on -one. and at first that was a little intimidating but like it's actually kind of nice to see like professors take uh, like so much of an interest in students so that's pretty cool too yeah, also, I think uh, for me, at least, my grade started going up after I started going to office hours. Um, it's very, very common. Like, a lot of people go to office hours to, uh, for homework help. Uh, and uh, the TAs and the professors, they, they will help you on the homework. Like, um, and also, I guess, um, I think for me, usually, if I have homework questions, I go, for the, I go to the TA office hours. And if it's for, like, just class material stuff, lecture material, I usually go to the professor's office hours. And they're just really, really helpful. So mm. never knew about office hours. I don't even know if they had it in my community college. They probably did. I didn't know about it. But <laughs> when I started going, it's it's a lot better. Uh, and you have a lot of less doubt. And also, you'll be kind of, it'll, it'll keep you motivated to um, stay up to date, um, I guess, in class. So you can actually, like, ask the right question and stuff like that. So just, yeah, go to office hours. Yeah. I'll also say um, <laughs> professors can have, like, a totally different demeanor in class compared to office hours. <laughs> Um, like I, I've had professors where I thought I was kind of like, man, this guy's kind of, kind of strict or, you know, 
kind of kind of you know like uh blunt but then i go to his office hours and he's like super understanding super nice and super patient and i think that's just because in office hours they have a little bit more freedom to be like themselves and because the, they're not so worried on making sure all the material is covered and they can also go a little bit more in depth and like make sure like work or explain in a way that you can understand it and they're they're going to they want to work with you it's like it's nice to go yes 10 out of 10 faculty recommend students go to office hours so it's definitely a really important part of um just your overall learning as they mentioned but also more as a community building things like that um so moving on to the next question um as a transfer student how many upper division stats classes are recommended for each quarter so um, i can answer this one i typically try to make plans for students where they're not taking more than two major class is per quarter um, and typically that's doable for most quarters um, if you come in with all of your preparatory classes completed um, depending on your major track you might have to take one um, or two quarters where you'll, you'll take three major classes but typically I try to make plans where it's no more than two um, just so you can have a more balanced schedule and take a course that's outside of your major or for a minor um, or what a course that you are just genuinely interested in. So the next question is for both of you. Have you either done um, internships or research? You want to go first? Patrick? Yeah, go ahead. Or, yeah, I'll, I'll go yeah first. either you can go. Sorry, okay. I didn't specify. Um, so I don't want to come off as discouraging, but as I'm sure you all kind of know, data science is like a really hot thing right now. Um, so it is really competitive out there. My first, the first summer after my junior year here, uh, I didn't get an internship. So I, what I did was I focused a lot on like working on my skills, like re revising my resume, uh, practicing programming, reviewing st uh, like uh, stats concepts. Um, and because of that prep, I was actually able to get an internship for this summer. I'll be starting, um, but I think like the third or fourth week of June, I'll be working at uh, Cepheid, which is a biotech company in the Bay Area as a data science intern. Um, and they do like a lot of uh, like biotechnology and medical diagnostics. Uh, they're actually the first company to get the FDA contract for the coronavirus testing, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, as for me, uh, I had one internship when I was transferring to Davis. So um, I was a data analyst intern at Kaiser Permanente's uh, HQ in Oakland. And, and that was where um, I did a program. I did a lot of Excel and SQL and Tableau, but um, I didn't really consider that my first internship until I guess um, the, the next internship I got, which was in my first year at Davis. Um, and that year I interned at AAA Insurance as a data analyst intern. And um, it was, and like Patrick said, it was really, really hard to get internships. Um, so most of my interviews I got was from the career fair. Um, and I really didn't really get any other uh, replies from applying online. So that was really hard. But after I had that one internship, the next year I, I got a lot more um, replies from other companies that I applied to online. So uh, yeah, and, so in this year, this summer, I'll be interning at uh, ancestry.com ancestry.com as a product analyst and yes yeah, that's kind of the but yeah like Patrick said it's really hard because a lot of these uh internships they do kind of uh want master students so but yeah but if you I guess you know just try to yeah to, it's, it's not impossible yeah it's, yeah it's gotta keep going but it's it's pretty stressful but I will, I will say uh Kadok mentioned a good point with the career fair um I actually got my internship through the career fair as well the Cepheid one um, they didn't have a, I couldn't find like a single posting online for the position I, I, I got. Um, and the, you know, when I met the recruiter at the internship, uh, at the intern fair or sorry, career fair, um, they were, you know, really receptive and really nice to talk to. And then like, I didn't hear back from them until I think it was like late February. So at first I thought I was like kind of forgotten, but you know, they reached out at the end, like, like each company has, has the recruiting a little differently. But uh, definitely take advantage of all the career fairs um, and, you know, make sure you go in there, put your best foot forward, like have your resume ready, have a elevator pitch kind of um, prepped and ready to go and, you know, rehearse it in front of a mirror and for other people too, just so you're used to uh, talking about, like talking about yourself in like a short one to two minute, you know, window. 
Yeah. Oh, also, one more thing. The internships we, we've got, um, they were usually, like, I think um, our stock courses that we had or that we took at the time, it wasn't too much help when it came to getting internships because they're usually looking for more applied uh, skills. So um, they would ask a lot about, you know, projects I've done um, or stuff I learned outside of the, uh, I guess, the curriculum because, you know, these are stuff that I might have taken in the future, but, I, you know, I haven't taken it yet because I'm a transfer and I needed a lot more prereqs for it. So um, I definitely wouldn't have had these internships if I didn't, I guess, self-study outside of uh, the classroom. Um, so just keep that in mind that uh, you might need to do, you know, a lot of prep outside of, you know, just your classes if you want like internships in statistics. So that's not to say the material or the curriculum here doesn't prepare you for them. Like there's, like I've been asked um, some basic like probability questions about like distributions and like combinatorics oh, yeah. and stuff like that, which if I yeah. hadn't taken probability theory, I would not have been able to answer. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, thank you for that. And our we have an internship and career center on campus that can help students with all aspects of the job or internship process. And um, they mentioned the um, career fairs. And so they have a one or two um, career fairs every quarter where they have um, hundreds of companies come on campus and recruit students. And so, like I said, it's definitely um, highly recommended that you go to that. Um, so moving on to the next question. Um, how many classes did you take in your first quarter and do you only take statistics classes for upper division? Um, so in your first quarter, you can take, um, I usually recommend between three and four classes, um, usually two major classes and then two non-major classes, one or two non-major classes. Um, and at UC Davis, you have certain unit requirements and you do have to take additional upper division unit classes outside of your major. Um, usually it's only um, three classes, upper division, three upper division classes max that you need to take outside of your major. Um, so it's not a pretty, not a very significant requirement. A lot of our students um, meet that requirement by completing a minor or they take extra stats classes, or they just take classes that they're genuinely interested in. Do you all want to talk about your first quarter course load? Um, so, okay, go ahead. Yeah, bye. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I definitely, you know, people always told me, oh yeah, quarter system is different, it's faster. You know, I kept that in mind, but I honestly got hit by it pretty hard. Because in, um, I think most of you guys are probably from a semester system where, you know, kind of the trend is, can kind of be lazy for the first like half of the course and then you just grind for the midterm and then you relax again for the next couple of months and then you grind for the final but in a quarter system you have to kind of stay up to date all the time um so that made it a lot it wasn't like harder but it, it made it a lot more different so it was a, definitely a struggle in the first quarter uh, in my first quarter i took one lower div which was linear algebra because i didn't have that prereq and i took two upper div which was one was in stat and one was in econ and yeah, they were definitely, uh, they were definitely harder, I would say, than the classes I've taken in community college. But that's probably also because of the, um, I wasn't really used to that kind of shift in um, work, work, I guess, because of the quarter system. So that's probably the biggest thing that's, you know, that's, that's making people have trouble um, at the transfer in the first quarter. Yeah, my, my first quarter, I took um, three classes. I took two lower division because I had to complete requirements, like linear algebra was one of them. And then the upper division class I took is um, STAT 108, uh, regression analysis. I, it's uh, one Kim recommends normally is one of the first classes you take as for your major. And I do agree because, um, actually, I guess I know why I'm going to answer another question I see in the Q&A. Is that uh, okay? Yeah. Okay, so um, the other question is, do you recommend we take 106 in the summer? And so I would actually recommend taking 108 first because 108 is regression and 106 is ANOVA for those of you that um, haven't looked. And if you'll kind of get into this when you get into 106, but ANOVA is literally another form of regression. So having 108 first and learning what regression is and then going to ANOVA makes it a lot easier um, than going the other way around. Uh, so I, will, I would say, you know, if you have to take a class this summer first, take 108 instead of 106. Um, 
both of them don't have any prereqs, I believe, other than like a elementary statistics course, which I think all of you completed as transfers. But um, yeah, like the first quarter wasn't too bad because like, I also came from a, a De Anza's on the quarter system, but it's still a bit of a change of pace because um, it's just the material is a little bit more difficult than uh, what you'd expect in like um, a lower division class. And it's a little bit more specific too. So like, instead of like in calculus, we're kind of like learning a little bit of all the topics. Like you have one whole quarter to learn about like one thing in a topic or like in stats. So it's kind of like different and like interesting how, um, like how much you learn about something in such a short amount of time. Yeah, and for taking classes in summer before you um, start in fall, you can. You typically don't have to. Um, I would say if you are thinking about taking classes this summer um, to get in touch with me and we can talk about what, what classes would be the best options for you and how that would impact your academic plan. Um, but you definitely can. Um, you just don't necessarily have to. So there's a question about uh, whether there are is as a track option that's related to biostatistics. Um, the short answer is no, we don't have a biostatistics track, but we do have an applied track and our applied track allows you to take the core stats classes that are similar to our other tracks and then you get to take some stats electives. And then you actually have an emphasis outside of statistics so um, you could take courses in the bio, certain courses in the biological sciences um, for that emphasis, or you could take economic classes if you're interested in economics. Um, our applied track out of all our options is the most flexible because you kind of get to um, choose courses in another field and see how stats is being used in a more specialized area. So that is, I think, our most biostatistics related option just because you have that flexibility. Keep in mind though that bio, bio courses in the biological sciences do have a significant number of prerequisites. So typically it requires like at least two years of chemistry, like you have to take the intro chemistry and then organic chemistry, a year of intro bio and things like that. So you would have to plan carefully if you do want to take the more advanced um, courses in the biological sciences at UC Davis. Um, I will say, uh if you are interested in biostatistics, I believe there is a computational biology minor. I'm not too sure what's uh, what are what classes required for it. You might need like all the lower division classes like Kim mentioned. But um, I also know that the computer science department has at least two bioinformatics classes. I think one is like computational biology, something like that, and the other one's like uh, intro to bioinformatics. So if you are interested in biostatistics, it might be, or it might be a good idea to check out those classes. And I believe the math department also has some new classes relating to computational biology. But again, I'm, I'm not too sure on that. But uh, yeah, def definitely do, um, just check out like other departments and see, like, see what they offer. Because um, you'll be surprised what you find. Yeah, definitely. I think that's really good advice. Um, there's a question about can transfers do a four plus one stats masters. I think that's referring to the something that you might have seen called the integrated degree program, where previously students could finish their undergrad here and then do a master's program here at UC Davis in statistics. That would only take one year. That program has been discontinued and so it's not admitting new students um, moving forward. So that's not something that we offer at UC Davis. We do like I said, have a master's program here. Um, and it typically takes um, around four quarters to complete. So uh, a majority of our students doing the master's take four or five quarters. So that's about a year and a half to complete. Um, or depending on what courses you have to come in with or what you wanna take, um, it can take up to two years. But doing it in a year is definitely not something that's really possible given the updated requirements to our master's program. So you all talked about this a little bit, um, but what are your hopes? Um, what do you want to do after undergrad in stats? 
Um, so as I touched upon this a little earlier, um, I would like to get into data science. Uh, my ultimate and like career goal is I want to become a machine learning engineer. Um, that's something I've been like really fascinated about for the past couple of years. And with my initial interest in computer science, I think it's a very good fit for me. Um, and I just find it really fascinating. Um, aside from data science and machine learning engineer, I'm also like pursuing software engineering opportunities. So I hope to end up in somewhere in one of those fields. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm young, or I like to think I'm young. So uh, I like to keep all my doors open. And so if any, you know, if some odd, uh, oddball opportunity comes my way, I'm not going to say no to it. Um, kind of going back to what, like the internship I got for this summer, uh, I actually had a interview with Microsoft lined up that I turned down because of this opportunity with Cepheid, especially with the coronavirus going on. And I thought that was like something I couldn't really pass up. And I initially had no interest in biotech or biostatistics. So like, again, you know, like, you, you guys are all young, keep your doors open. Like, you'll never be, you like, you'll never know what, what can come your way, so. Yeah, yeah, as for me, um, I'm definitely thinking, I wanna keep doing, uh, you know, data analytics, data science, stuff like that. Um, but even more long-term, um, I do eventually wanna come back for a graduate degree. Um, Cause usually when you, if you keep going this route, you either, want to transition into more data science stuff or you become, you kind of, you kind of go the more managerial route. Um, and those are probably, you know, two most common options. I'm not exactly sure which one. Um, I think I'm still like really young. So, but yeah, I definitely do want to come back for master's because I'm actually, I've actually um, really enjoyed the theory courses at Davis. So I do want to keep kind of learning more theory. I think it's just really cool. Um, so yeah, it's kind of rough plan after college. Okay, um, um, this uh, panel is going to be ending at um, around six. And so I want to make sure we a um, a answer questions that we haven't really touched upon before. So um, the next question is, how has the transition been to online statistics classes? And so before you all kind of talk about your experience with that, I wanted to address fall. Um, we have re not received any guidance about the fall quarter, whether it's going to be online or in person yet. So unfortunately, we don't know that yet. Um, but they can talk about their experiences this spring. Our classes this summer are going to be online, though. Um, in my experience, I think it's actually a nice, it's, 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 it has its pros and cons, but it's not terrible. One benefit of it is, though, is that um, teachers will actually 100% record their lectures. So if you ever miss one or, you know, if you weren't too focused in your lecture, you can always go back and watch it. Also, if the pace of the professor is kind of too slow for you, too fast, you can change the speed of the recording. So uh, in that way, it's a, it's a good way to not miss out on anything. Um, but I guess you do lose that kind of human interaction. So, um, but in terms of, I guess, just transitioning, I think it was fine. It, it, um, the department has made a pretty smooth transition, so it wasn't that bad. And, and they always try to accommodate for, you know, mm -hmm. knowing that it's online and there are a lot of like, uncertainty. So in one of my midterm classes, um, even though it was due specifically at 12.05, uh, you know, he, he, uh, the professor kind of actually allow people to kind of submit it a bit later without any consequences because, you know, it's their first time and there might have been, you know, just technical issues, stuff like that. So teachers are pretty understanding of those things. So yeah, I think it was, I think it was fine. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what Kadok said. I actually think stats is probably one of the best majors to have switched online, like in terms of transition, um, just because there's no labs or anything that you actually have to be in person to do, which makes it very easy. So um, like, you know, instead of going to class every day, I just sit in front of a computer and watch lectures. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll review my notes and stuff like that. Um, but I think the transition's been pretty smooth and all the professors have been super accommodating. Um, like when there, I think it was uh, like one of my classes, there's uh, no one was able to complete the homework and the TA was just like, all right, um, if you need an extension, type one in the chat. And like the chat got spammed with ones and the TA was like, all right, I'll talk to the professor about getting you guys an extension. Um, so like, they're all like, it's pretty flexible. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think it's that bad. I think stats is like probably, again, one of the best majors to have, to be in with the transition to online. Okay, great, thank you. Um, 
there's a, been a few questions about what requirements you have outside of the major requirements. And so at UC Davis, we do have general education requirements, a writing requirement, and um, certain unit requirements in order to graduate. If you have a Getsy completed, that completely takes care of the general education requirements. And so you would then just have an upper division writing requirement, and then you would need to fill um, just the general unit requirements. Um, so if you don't have a Getsy fulfilled, you will have a general education requirement where you'd have to take courses um, in a broad range of fields. Um, and, and we can talk more about that one on one if you do want to talk about that. And um, there is a question as well about um, the boot camp. Earlier, um, I had mentioned that we're doing a summer boot camp for transfer students, a week long summer boot camp that's going to be in mid September to help prepare transfer students for prepare for the fall quarter. And there was a question about whether it costs anything and it doesn't cost anything. It's free for you. Just your time. <laughs> so um, there is a question about um, uh, the differences between the tracks, um, specifically the machine learning versus data science track, and which one involves more programming? I would actually say data the data science track requires more programming than the machine yeah. learning track. Um, it has machine at least learning, one more. Yeah. It, it, no, does, it, does a machine learning track require 141B? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Or no, it's an elective pay, option. Yeah, it's an oh, okay. elective. Um, so, in terms of required courses, and I would say also elective, like given the elective choices, I think the data science overall has more programming. Um, from my perspective, the machine learning track is very theoretical machine learning, which isn't bad. It will give you like the knowledge needed if you, especially if you want to pursue a graduate degree related to machine learning. Um, but I don't, again, like, I think there's only a really one required class difference. You could technically complete both, like all the classes for both tracks, like, and, and graduate with either track. Um, I think if, if Kadok does the machine learning track, because I, I believe he originally uh, was a data science track, like me, and um, if he's considering the machine learning track, there's only one class that I've taken that he hasn't taken. And there's only yeah. one class he's taken that I haven't taken. So it's like very similar. Or you can set them up to be very similar. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the, the, these tracks have a lot of similarities and um, as we had discussed earlier, in your first quarter, we can make a plan for you that keeps your options open. So you definitely don't need to decide on a track um, right right away. Um, you definitely have time. So um, we have a question about when can you make an appointment with a stats advisor? So I'll start on um, taking appointments for transfer students um, starting June 1st, because that's the deadline to SIR. So beginning June 1st, you can make an appointment with me and talk about the major. But um, I would say that you can always email me anytime. Um, my email is stat-advising at ucdavis.edu. Um, I'll also be putting a lot more information out there for you on our website. I'll be emailing you information. We'll be doing additional webinars where I talk about the major program more in depth. Um, so you're going to be getting a lot of information from me. So I don't want you to feel worried that um, you are not getting all of your questions answered right now, um, especially if it's a more specific personal question. Um, that's something we can definitely discuss um, either through email or when you want to make an appointment with Um, and I guess um, I'll try to answer, we'll try to go through um, a few more questions. I don't think we're going to be able to answer all of the ones that we have left, but I'll try to um, make sure we answer the ones that are kind of more general that we haven't addressed before. So, um, 
I think there's a question about doing research at UC Davis. I know we talked about that a little bit, but um, in terms of how to get involved in research, um, of course, um, if you want to do research in statistics, um, the best way is to just talk to your instructors. Um, uh, Kidok and Patrick mentioned going to office hours. That's really important. Um, we don't have a formal research program in our department, in, in, which means like we don't like advertise research, research positions for undergraduates. Most of our students find opportunities in research by um, talking to their instructors. We also have students that do research in departments all over campus. Um, faculty in other departments really, really like our students because of their staff's background, because most research involves some sort of data. Um, so we have students that work in the economics department, the viticultural and enology department, um, psychology, all kinds of different things. So there's a lot of ways to get involved in research. Um, you just have to um, take the initiative and either apply if um, there's applications open or just talk to your faculty because at least working with faculty in our department, most students find opportunities just by talking to them in person. Also to uh, expand on Kim's answer, um, if you want to look for not so much research, but just experience, a lot of op offices on campus do offer, do have like, uh, student, not, I don't know if they're work study, but like student employee positions that have to do with like data analysis. Um, like I have a friend who works, I think in the financial aid department as a budget analysis or financial analyst. And then I have another friend that works, I think in the IT department as a data analyst. So uh, like there are a lot of opportunities out there too. So don't just think like, I don't want to do research. What can I do? Um, there's definitely a lot of opportunities if you seek them out. Great. Thank you. Um, so I think this will be our final question, unless, um, unless it's answered very quickly. Um, but what were some of your favorite stats classes to take? You want to go first, Kido? Yeah, I think for me, it would be 131A and 131B, because, well, that one's probability theory, and the next one is um, intro to mathematical statistics. I think for me, uh, those classes were kind of the classes that actually tell you what statistics is uh, and it kind of gave me, um, I guess, built my appreciation for it. Uh, and it's, it's, and it's kind of, it, even though it's very theoretical, it's pretty relevant to the real world. So it's, uh, it's nice. And besides those, besides that series, every other course kind of feels like a elective because that's kind of like the, the core. But once you, but once I appreciated those core classes, other classes started being more fun. So yeah, those were my favorite uh, courses, I think. Uh, for me, I think um, 130B, which is the like s brief version of Intro to Mathematical Statistics, uh, was one of my favorite classes where getting to actually like understand what an F value is or, you know, all these different tests and like how hypothesis testing actually works and the mechanics behind it was pretty cool. Um, I also really enjoyed the data science series, which is the 141 series. Um, each one's pretty cool and they each cover a different aspect of data data science. Like um, the one I'm in right now, 141C focuses a lot more on the engineering and CS side of it, where 141B is more of like the data, like working with data, querying it, gathering it, so like and stuff like that. Um, and one of my favorite classes that's not necessarily in the stats department, but is required for the stats, uh, for the data science major was actually MAT 167, which is applied linear algebra. Um, it's probably the hardest class I've ever taken or one of the top two hardest classes I've ever taken, but like the material in there, I found like really fascinating learning, like all these like advanced linear algebra tricks and like how it applies to statistics and machine learning. Um, and I thought that was super cool. And like, as like while going through it, I hated the class, like after coming out of it, I was like, man, that class is actually super interesting. <laughs> like I, I take it again. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, there's a lot of good classes at Davis. And like, you know, if you're always unsure again, talk to Kim or even visit other department advisors if it's not a class within the stats department. But um, there's a lot of really cool classes here. And like, I don't think there's been a single class where I was just like, I dread going to this class every day. So. <laughs> That's a great attitude. Um, and I think like Patrick mentioned, it's just really important to reach out and use your resources here at UC Davis. Um, 
and talk to your peers, um, get involved in the data science club. Do you all want to talk a little bit about the data science club since you're both officers? Sorry to put you on the spot again. <laughs> no problem. Um, so yeah, so the data science club, um, we're sort of in like a weird phase right now just because everything's online and it's kind of hard to do clubs online when like, especially with uh, members that we can't meet in person. Um, but it's what we try to focus on is we've tried to hold like one workshops where you can build your technical skills or learn things. And um, other things we do are like focus on career development. Like uh, uh, the position I have as an officer is I'm actually the career development officer or the co-career development officer and uh, Kadok also works with me. And we plan to have like a series of workshops on like how to write a resume, um, how to approach networking, what you should like interview kind of tips and tricks and like how to research roles and like sort of like figure out what necessarily you want to do because data science is very broad. Like I said, like, like there's more the engineering side, there's more the like straight statistical theory, like hypothesis testing side. So there's a lot of things out there. We, we try to hold a workshop to cover a lot of that. But um, aside from all that, it's just a really good place to meet people that are like-minded. And, um, you know, if you guys have questions, you guys can, I don't know if uh, Kido wants to, I'm not going to include in this, but like you guys always can like hit me up on Facebook or uh, LinkedIn, um, and I'll try to answer your questions there. I'm pretty active. Um, but yeah, and like also there's a Data Science Club Facebook page if you wanna check it out or ask questions there and I'll see if I can, I'll try and respond. Yeah, yeah, uh, same, yeah. Maybe I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah, and so if you had a question that we weren't able to get to, uh, you're always welcome to email me. Again, my email is stat-advising at ucnavis.edu. Um, the, all of my contact information is on our department website, which is statistics.ucdavis.edu. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I'm sorry that we couldn't get to all your questions today. Um, if you joined us halfway through, um, we'll be posting the recording soon, so I'll email that to you all when we have that. Um, but thank you all. Thank you, Patrick and Kadok, so much. You all um, were so great. Um, and congratulations on your admissions to UC Davis and have a good evening. Yeah, congrats everyone. Thanks for coming. Congrats guys. Bye. Bye.